All right, so I want to read the introduction of the Wikipedia article on uh, populism. So we yeah, have idea of what populism means uh, more generally so that when, um, when we look at populism as Dussel discusses it, uh, we have a better what's unique about, you know, what he's saying. And uh, so uh, Wikipedia says this on populism. Populism refers to a range of political stances that emphasize the idea of the people and often juxtaposes this group against the elite. The term developed in the late 19th century in connection with the populist party and has been applied to various politicians, parties, and movements since that time, often derisively by opponents. Within political science and other social sciences, several different definitions of populism have been employed, with some scholars proposing that the term be rejected altogether. A common framework for interpreting populism is known as the ideational approach. This defines populism as an ideology which presents the so-called people as a morally good force and contrasts them against the elite who are portrayed as corrupt and self-serving. Populists differ in how the people are defined, but it can be based along uh, class, ethnic, or national lines. Populists typically present the elite as comprising the political, economic, cultural, and media establishment depicted as a homogenous entity and accused of placing their own interest and often the interest of other groups such as large corporations, foreign countries, China, or immigrants uh, above the interest of the people. Populist parties and social movements are often led by charismatic or dominant figures who present themselves as the voice of the people. According to the ideational approach, populism is often combined with other ideologies such as nationalism, liberalism, or socialism. Thus, populists can be found at different locations along the left-right political spectrum, and there exists both left-wing populism and right-wing populism. Other scholars of the social sciences have defined the term populism differently. According to the popular agency definition used by some historians of the United States history, populism refers to a popular engagement of the population in political decision making, an approach associated with the political scientist Ernesto Leclau presents populism as an emancipatory social force through which the marginalized groups challenge dominant power structures. Some economists have used the term to refer to governments which engage in substantial public spending financed by foreign loans, resulting in hyperinflation and emergency measures. In popular discourse, where the term has often been used pejoratively, it has sometimes been used synonymously with demagogy to describe politicians who present overly simplistic answers to complex questions in a highly emotional manner or with opportunism to characterize politicians who seek to please voters without rational consideration as to the best course of action. In the 1960s, the term became increasingly popular among social scientists in Western countries and later in the 20th century, it was applied to the political parties active in liberal democracies. In the 21st century, the struggle over the term intensified in political discourse, particularly in the Americas and Europe, with it being used to describe a range of left-wing, right-wing, and centrist groups that challenge the established parties. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so populism can, can apply to you know, almost any uh, political party or political movement. Uh, and usually these populist party, you know, these populist movements are popular, like low popular, uh, like Dussel uh, discussed in uh, chapter one of, of uh, anti-Cartesian meditations and transmodernity. Um, and of course, uh, President Trump is seen as a as a key example of populism, and and how it can it can verge to uh, you know reactionary, violent, uh, anti-democratic um, 
uh, sort of forms of political action, like we saw on January 6th in, uh, uh, in Washington. But then it's also applied uh, to people like um, Fidel Castro would be a populist um, and, uh, you know, very much identified himself as the voice of the Cuban people. Uh, but, you know, we also see that in Trump. He doesn't literally say that, but he has a way of implying that, like he really knows what people are thinking. And he has a, a broad base of support. And so these are popular movements. And so uh, populism is uh, complicated as a concept because it, 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 it confronts the notion of democracy. If a populist leader is popular, uh, that means they have democratic support. <laughs> and just because you don't like the direction that they're going, um, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, uh, how do you jibe, how do you make fit together your notion, notion of democracy with a criticism that somebody's too populist, that he's appealing, they're appealing, this political leader is appealing too much to the people, you know, he's, he's too popular. Uh, you know, it's like, it's, it creates a lot of conceptual problems. It's a, it's a philosophically problematic concept. And Dussel's going to define it in his own way. And so let's see if that is a useful uh, concept as Dussel defines it. 